So hello everyone and my name is Amy Stokes. I am a third year medic from Exeter University and today I'm going to be talking about taking care of yourself in the first year of medicine. I'm also doing this presentation with Emily Woodcroft and Nuria Horner who are both third year medical students at Exeter too and we're all part of the committee of wellbeing in medicine society in Exeter University. So Part one, I'm going to be talking about imposter syndrome. So imposter syndrome um, is a severe feeling of inadequacy and self-doubt in your surroundings. And it's the perception that you haven't really earned your own accomplishments and that you don't belong in the position you are. Personally, I've experienced these feelings, um, especially in year one, as you're going into a completely different environment where you're surrounded by high achieving academic um, individuals like yourself and this can be very different from perhaps your college experiences or experiences of secondary school. So a bit more about imposter syndrome. So despite its name it's not actually indicated as a psychological disorder and it can actually just be referred to as imposter phenomenon. Um, it's easy to feel like you're being ungrateful for your position because of this self-doubt um, but it, it it is an innate fear, so it means that this is a, psych a physiological response, which means that you're not actually at fault for these feelings. So um, don't worry if you do feel ungrateful, uh, if you're having some self-doubt. And it also means it doesn't improve with a greater amount of achievements. So by overworking yourself to perhaps overcome these feelings, you're not actually doing your well-being any good. And even Albert Einstein um, is thought to have experienced this syndrome. So it just goes to show that um, it can affect anybody. Um, and it can range in severity. So like I said at the beginning, I've experienced some of these feelings. I wouldn't say they impacted me ma majorly compared to other people, but it's just nice to be aware that they are, they can happen and you may be experiencing them. So who does it affect specifically? It's mainly high achieving um, students or anyone who is high achieving, um, which is why medical students are at such a great risk of this um, syndrome. And the first year of medicine, it can be really tough. Like I said, you're coming from a different environment and you're having to get used to um, a different course and university life at the same time. So you've transitioned from this high achieving background into likewise um, individuals. So it is quite difficult. Um, and therefore it's easy to look at your peers and think, do I actually belong um, in this community here? And the answer is yes, you do belong here. That's why the medical school has chosen you to come here. They chose you for specific reasons. So um, don't necessarily focus on these feelings too much. Um, it's just an achievement in itself to be in medical school. So don't focus too much on the people surrounding you. Just focus on yourself more. Um, it also appears to affect women more than men. This may be linked to perhaps women having um, more issues with worry and um, fear compared to men. And um, what was interesting is it may be more apparent in misrepresented groups, for example, BAME groups or in disabilities. And um, this is linked to the feeling of having a minority status, which might sort of cause this innate self-doubt um, around you and you start to compare yourself to people, to your peers perhaps. So competition and imposter syndrome. From the get-go, medicine is a very competitive course. Um, it's very um, based on team workers competing with each other in sort of an indirect way. So just think about the lengthy process you've had to endure just to get into medical school. You've had interview processes, you've had um, GCSEs and A-levels. Those are all very competitive um, processes that you've had to use. Um, and despite medicine, is, it is a very teamwork-based environment. You know, you're learned from the, you're taught from the start to make sure that you are working as a team rather than individually. So it is, um, it is quite, quite a contradiction, the fact that you're competing with each other as well. But for example, um, your academic results, they may affect whether you can intercalate. 
and your, even your AMKs, you know, your scores are based on calculations of averages in the whole year. So there's always going to be fellow students around you who um, fail and then obviously um, dictate what your score is going to be. And it's this whole culture of competition that can lead to feelings of imposter syndrome and then they can lead to feelings of self-doubt. So it's something to be aware of. But all you can do is try your absolute best. And that is the most that anyone will ask you to do. A lot of medical schools are actually quite lenient and um, are accepting. As long as you're trying and working hard, they understand that. And they do try to give you as much opportunity as you can to recover from any perhaps um, grades that you haven't quite met. So it's just about working as hard as you can, but you have to ensure that your well-being isn't affected. So um, what you need to do really is find a nice balance between well-being and working hard. And this can be quite hard in the first year, um, especially for me. I found it quite difficult. I always felt like I wasn't working hard enough and that in turn actually had a, an effect on my well-being. So um, it's not always as much work as you can. It needs to be balanced with, I need to take time out for myself. So what can imposter syndrome be? Um, these are quite extreme examples, but it's just nice to be able to show how they can be, it can be linked with other, um, other ideas. So psychological stress, emotional suffering, mental health disorders like anxiety and depression, drug abuse, and sabotaging your own career. So it is important to highlight these issues and um, be able to identify them in yourself, or maybe your fellow friends as well. As a little side note, I want to talk about mental health um, quickly, as I did say that imposter syndrome has been linked with mental health issues. So the prevalence of depression is um, about 27.2% in medical students. Um, and this is because medicine is challenging. It is a very competitive and demanding course. So it is understandable that sometimes mental health can suffer. But again, it is about finding that balance between your well-being and your work life. So it isn't uncommon to, to come across conditions such as anxiety and depression. And um, what's actually interesting is when starting university, the mental health of a medical student is actually similar to that of a non-medical student and the general public. But as their course progresses, their mental health tends to worsen. So it is um, important to understand that this may happen very slowly throughout, throughout your course where you, you might not even realise that your mental health is deteriorating. So it is important to have um, sort of maybe days or just a five, five minutes every evening just to focus on your mental health and think, what have I achieved today? How do I feel? And just sort of basic things like that. So yeah, it is important to be aware of these um, disorders in yourself and in your friends as well. So just briefly, anxiety disorders, they are, um, it is a rational and physiological response called by, caused by several different triggers that basically lead to excessive worry and fear that ca cannot be controlled. So it's really easy to feel overwhelmed by new situations and routines. And when you obviously move to university, you're in a completely different situation. You haven't got your family in the same area usually. And you obviously have a very different routine where you're having to do your own self-directed learning. So it's very different. So it may take a few months for you to adjust, but that's totally fine. Just try and focus on your well-being during those months and ensure that you are trying to learn how to, you can form a new routine for that environment. Um, so some tips for anxiety. I've put here, create a routine that's work efficient, but also not too crammed. So I find a routine is really helpful um, for anxiety and it just seems to help me gain more control of it. And don't revise on bad days. This is probably my biggest tip is not to revise on a bad day because you're not going to revise efficiently. And you're not going to be able to retain the information that you're learning anyway. It's better just to say, okay, I'm having a bad day. I'm going to take today off and I'm going to pick up my book tomorrow. That will help you so much more than sitting there for eight hours when you feel really terrible and rising for those eight hours. And again, just don't be upset if you don't stick to your plan. Life happens and things happen that interfere. And, you know, if you, if you get upset over them, there's nothing you can do about it. You just need to leave that and try your best the next day.
also exercising and eating a healthy diet which is what Nuria will be talking about shortly uh, this is really important I think just to make sure that you're getting um, all the right nutrients in your body and you are being healthy and exercise is also a very good stress reliever also I find working in a clean environment is a lot more helpful um, for my revision than anything else so I feel like if I'm in a messy environment when I'm revising that it's very distracting this is actually maybe a reason why people prefer libraries because obviously they're um, outside of their room and it's a clean environment so for me personally making sure that my room is clean is, is something that really helps it's just a little thing sometimes that sort of help you just briefly depressive disorders is this prolonged feeling of numbness and low mood and it can affect uh, people in multiple ways so it may um, so for some people it may be extremely difficult to get out of bed for example or to even move and it is this overall dissatisfaction with life which can be very distressing and it can lead to feelings of guilt you feel guilty that you feel this way about life when everyone seems to feel amazing about life so um, it, is, it is distressing and if you feel like any of your friends are experiencing this please do talk to them because it is very upsetting for that individual as well not just for everyone else watching that individual so some tips for low mood and even depression try to watch some light-hearted shows for example I watch friends and um, that seems to always pick up my mood quite a lot self-care is really important um, for low mood just doing little things like making yourself a cup of tea getting showered have, um, getting dressed just those little things really help you to carry on through the day and you don't even need to revise or do anything on those bad days but as long as you just make sure that you're looking after yourself then you feel a lot better and also you know slightly reducing your hours um, of revision during these tough periods and seeking help from tutors so tutors they can be really good people to talk to because they understand your course they've been through it a lot of the time um, and they can be really helpful and also phoning friends and family now you don't necessarily have to talk to these friends and families about your mental health but just phoning them um, and listening to their stories can actually make you realize um, why you know that you're happy there in your life so it can bring back a bit of satisfaction so how to get help um, a few websites that I have put down that I find really helpful. So mind.org, this is a really good site for explaining any mental health condition. It really is and it provides videos of people explaining them. So it's very holistic and it's really good if you're just thinking, oh, I don't quite understand this or I don't quite know how I would approach that. Use mind.org, it's really good. And COOF, COOF is really interesting. I think it's an app designed by students to and for students to provide mental health support and allow you to talk to others facing the same issues. So it's basically like an online network like um, Facebook Messenger, but except you're specifically helping your own mental health. And the NHS Mood Self-Assessment. This is nice if you're trying to request support without having to talk to someone directly on the phone, um, which can be a barrier if you're suffering from anxiety and depression. So that's nice um, to use. And also Silver Cloud is a really good app where you can undergo therapy like CBT, again, without needing face-to-face -face sessions with an actual person. And these are really good, both the Silver Cloud and the NHS mood self-assessment. They're really good things to just initiate that, um, sort of requesting support for your mental health and then you can obviously have things like Samaritans where you can call up um, so yeah um, and also I think educating yourself on mental health conditions is really important because when you do that you start to understand them a bit better and you can identify them even in other people as well and maybe understand them rather than judge them um, also look at the wellbeing services or resources that your universities offer. Um, I know Exeter is really good with their wellbeing services, um, so I'm not sure what other universities are like, but it's just about sometimes just looking or maybe even just asking your tutor if they have any resources for you. Uh, again, seek help and ask questions from your tutors. They are often really lovely and will help you. 
And um, don't ever believe that your mental health conditions will limit abilities as doctors. Um, if anything, they can make you 10 times more passionate and dedicated. So even if you're just having some feelings of imposter syndrome, don't ever think that it's limiting your abilities. You've just got to do as best as you can. Um, so next, Emily will be doing a chat on transitioning into the medical community. And um, please go follow SDOCS. It is a really good page for loads of different lectures.